As you walk through the valley of the shadow of hell, you will see through the fog a bend in reality. A veil that is beyond your own comprehension. It's the other side. Beyond the void. What's up, guys, and welcome back to Beyond, Beyond the Void Horror Podcast. That's right. It's episode 367, and today's a very special episode because it's my birthday episode. So, Birthday princess. Yes, I'm a fucking idiot. <laughs> Christina's making me wear this. It's his birthday, so that's why we have decorated. Yeah, I like how mine is like completely like... <laughs> like blown out over here yours is like one dangly bit <laughs> well i mean but it's not here. my birthday it's your birthday let's do a different color back here there, there you go. go that, that way it's a little good. it's a little off you know it's a, a little dark, too much blue it's <laughs> like a dark birthday it's an evil evil birthday well it is a uh it's a lot of birthdays that i've had i'm not going to tell you how many because i'm just i'm just at that age where it just doesn't matter anymore uh but yes i am very happy to be alive i'm very happy to have the support that i get from you guys who not only love the podcast but share the youtubes and all that other stuff uh we wouldn't exist literally if you guys didn't pay attention at all um i would probably just give up <laughs> but uh well, since it was your birthday you got to choose the movie this week for that's the right podcast. yes i picked a really weird movie very weird and uh we're doing lady terminator from what year is it? 1988 88. Eight, another 88 that's last right last week we did an 88 too so <laughs> This is a Indonesian film that is kind of like a possession slash they treat the possession like a like she's the Terminator. <laughs> There's like scenes and phrases and things in here. So this is kind of like a rip off. The thing about Indonesian films is, is that they didn't really have the, the prowess back then mm -hmm. like you know the u.s did with like all these different fucking movies right so they they kind of took like examples of other people's work just like any artist does to try to find you know a happy medium that they could you know get out the the, the movies to the world and also try to make a little money because what was happening is in indonesia i just found this out they were actually giving away like credits they would say the, the companies that were selling the movies, the distribution companies, mm -hmm. they were like, look, you need to start making movies for us. Oh. We'll give you a deal. For every movie you make of your own, we'll give you five movies that you can distribute. Oh, I see. So they just started pounding them out like right. from like the 70s all the way up. And it mm -hmm. was like this booming industry. They were making more movies than the United States was at, the, at one point. Uh-huh. So it, it's pretty wild. And this is one of those movies by one of the bigger uh, directors out there who kind of worked on some pretty interesting ones, which we'll talk about later. But, yeah, this one's wild, guys. <laughs> <laughs> we had a good time, though. Like, it's, Yeah, we you know, did. We I wanted did. to pick something we can have fun with, you know, mm -hmm. instead of just... Like something we'd take a risk on. You know right, what I mean? Right, exactly. Like sometimes they're good, sometimes they're not. I love mm -hmm. taking a risk. Mm -hmm. You know, just like we did when we were younger and we would, we didn't know how to, we didn't have music to listen to, right? So you would go to the video store, you'd go to Blockbuster or CD or, store or whatever just yeah. to get music and you would go in there and you walk in and you go, what? Well, that cover looks cool. Exactly. That's how I found out about corn years ago. Oh, like, yeah. you know, I didn't know what the fuck it was. I was like, ooh, this is creepy. 
there's a shadowy figure like on a playground. What the fuck is this? <laughs> Sounds like a goodbye. <laughs> Nowadays, I'd get canceled for that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, naked baby swimming in a pool. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you, you, you. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, Kurt Cobain's anniversary of his birthday or his death, his death was the sixth? Yes, 30 years. Was it the sixth? No, no, no. It was the fourth. We didn't find out till the sixth. Oh, which was wow. the day before my birthday, which is on the 7th, mm -hmm. when it happened. And I was fucking devastated. Yeah. Uh, when it, that happened back in the day, mm -hmm. holy shit. Yeah, it was a big deal. I was kind of mad, actually. Yeah. Because I think I, I really looked up to him, you know, in a lot of ways. Because it's not like his music was, like, super complicated. And a lot of people make fun of that. Mm -hmm. There was just a raw emotion to it that I think went along with the... The struggle of the youth. Yeah, that, exactly. That, like, you know, the whole, like, you know, we're misunderstood. Right. You know? Um, and it was just like a big movement. So when people make fun of it, I'm just like, nobody cares. Nobody cares about your weird shit, okay? It wasn't about the just the music. It was about everything. You right. know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, I was like watching a video on some of the people who had spoke out when he died. Uh-huh. And who were negative and who were positive. Uh-huh. And of course, you know, like Dave Mustaine was like a dickhead about it. Metallica was a dickhead about it because they were getting pushed out. Right. Their music was old and dying. Right. While Nirvana was like it bringing this, is. you know, new movement. Yeah, I know. But... <laughs> <laughs> well, they're old and dying. But, but, <laughs> but both those bands were like talking shit. Uh, what was it? Uh, Eminem talked shit about it, obviously. Mm -hmm. He did like a cartoon. Like it was called the Slim Shady Show. Do you remember that? No, I don't remember that. They do uh, a thing where it was like young Eminem, like Slim Shady. Mm -hmm. And he had like a bunch of friends and stuff, all the different character voices that he did for his first album. And uh, they had <laughs> they had summoned Kurt Cobain with a Ouija board. And when oh he God. and when he appeared, he didn't have the top half. Of oh, his my head. God, that's horrible. <laughs> That's horrible. It, I mean, it definitely was. That's so Eminem, though. Yeah, it really was at the time because that was edgelord behavior, right? Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, my gosh. That led us into the 2000s where everybody was still trying to be an edgelord. So. Mm -hmm. Talica also said they made a joke on stage. They said, what color were Kurt Cobain's eyes? blue one blue that way one blue that oh my god yeah. and so then that's horrible so then the drummer i can't think of his name who's the drummer of metallica lars lars um comes out and he's like hey what's has two legs two and two leg two has two legs and two arms and uh is working at mcdonald's now the, the remaining cat the remaining group of nirvana <laughs> and then that year fucking Food Foo Fighters. Fighters put out their album mm -hmm. the next year which blew up and now they're like bigger than Metallica yeah pretty much yeah. <laughs> I mean don't oh get me God. wrong I like some Metallica shit but you know well you have to it's part of our culture oh yeah but man what a fucking what birthday fucking present dicks, dude. This, I always gotta remember that every time my birthday comes oh, around mine is um, uh, Princess Diana died on my 18th birthday uh, was that a big deal to you? Yes, it was. Huh. Well, because it was like this huge thing. Well, like, yeah. That day, so. Paparazzi, paparazzi. <laughs> <laughs> Horrible. Well, I didn't want to sing it. You hate when I sing for some reason. I do. So mean. I'm like a singer. You should be like, you know, supporting yeah, that. You're like, oh, a, it's cringy when you off, sing. Not Jesus. off the riff because it makes my ear hurt. Ah, I pulled, I pulled Just a, like that. I pulled a muscle. <laughs> That's what it feels like. My leg got trapped you, under the chair. Your body's trying to tell you something. Yeah, I'm dying. Yeah. You, so is my age. See. My age is telling me things, too. <laughs> and my health. Hey. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. <laughs> what, I, have, I have two things. Christina is the organized one. So whenever I look at her and she's, like, coming up with he's stuff. Li he's like, what are we supposed to do now? Okay. Yeah. I, okay. I have two things. Okay. Okay. Have you. Don't you even bark at me, mister. Murray's demanding shit. You see this? 
This is full of treats in little pockets in it's here. It's a sniff mat. It's a snuffle we mat. We got like this little mat, and it's got little hollow holes for those who are listening. And there's little t- and tiny gonna pieces. He's going to attack you. Yeah, he is very demanding. Anyway. Okay. I have two things. Have you seen the pictures of Christian Bale as Frankenstein? Yes. It looks kind of yeah. like a... You know what it kind of looks like? It's it's hipster. Yeah. It looks like a hipster Frankenstein. Oh, I just don't get the style. Everything's like a SoundCloud it's rapper now. It's an independent now. film. Do you know who who's uh, directing Maggie it? Maggie Gyllenhaal. Yeah, Maggie Gyllenhaal. Which is weird. Also, well, they were in the movie Batman together, so she played yeah, Dark Knight. Yeah, yeah, she played Rachel in the best movie. <laughs> She played uh, the best movie ever. Yeah, one of the Dark best. Night. Yeah, the best Batman movies ever. So. Yeah. Oh, also Penelope Cruz is in that. Well, I was thinking about this by the way. I want to bring this up because, okay, so we got that like hipster thing. Mm-hmm. We also had Lisa Frankenstein. And, oh yeah. And we also have like the Wolfman coming back. So is this just like a resurgence? I guess. Like it must be. It's weird because it's like, it's almost like. They shouldn't know about it, but for some reason they're kind of drawn to it. The younger generation, I guess. But Maggie Gyllenhaal is... is... I think it might just be the industry pushing it in that direction. Yeah, they're like, we don't want to lose our copyrights, guys. That might be. (laughs) But it's going to be called The Bride, and it comes out next year, October of next year, 2025. Um, You know what? I'll watch it, of course. I would love to see him do a normal human being's performance. Who, Christian Bale? Yeah, like a, a, a suave, fun guy. Kind of like how Tom Cruise used to have be before you, he got famous. Have you seen Swing Kids? Have right. you seen well, him in Swing Kids? That's what I'm talking oh about, God. Christina. Yeah, no, he's great. Wait, and he in Newsies? He was in Newsies. Wait, wasn't he in The Outsiders? Uh, I think, was he in The Outsiders? What was, which movie was it where he was doing the backflips off the fucking... <laughs> was that Newsies? No, Outsiders. We just oh, watched it. Oh, was it Outsiders? It. Oh, I forget he was in that. I forget who it was, but we were like... I don't think it was him. We were laughing the whole time because he just kept... Oh, it was Tom Cruise. Yeah, That's that was, was Tom Cruise. <laughs> yeah, that was it. Christian Bale was but, too yeah, young for that. But the Tom Outsiders. Cruise and Christian Bale are very similar. They got like one dimension of acting anymore. <laughs> you know, it's like, hello, I am acting in an action movie now. I think the most I ever saw Tom Cruise act since his early days was... When he did that part in Tropic Thunder, where oh, he was yeah. like bald and he was like where, doing the dance. Oh yeah, and stuff. he was funny in that. It was hilarious. Yeah. So, I mean, it's hilarious for Tom Cruise. Okay? Right. <laughs> Which, by the way, I, wanna, I really want to watch that movie again. <laughs> I know it's like <laughs> we, uh, we really shouldn't. Every but... year somebody gets upset about it. They're like, "Did you know that there's someone wearing blackface in that movie?" <laughs> and I'm like, uh, "Yeah, I think we've been over this like 20 times now." <laughs> I know. Oh my gosh. And then did you see there's a new Matrix movie in the works? Oh, it's it's uh, going to... Okay, listen to me. On. Listen to me. It's from the director of Cabin in the Woods, Drew Goddard. Okay, so is he working with... Um... No, Busco- the Wyskowski... No. No, 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 no. Who did Cabin in the Woods? It was like a screenplay that was written between two people. Oh, I don't know. I don't know who's doing this. Anyway, screenplay. continue on. I'll tell you. I'll but anyway, you the, the Wyskowskis are, are going to... Technically, be involved, but the sisters, Lana, you mean? Yeah, Wana Wyskowski. I say always say it wrong. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Um, will remain on board as executive producer, and that's it. So Man, that's that kind of like I don't know. They're just kind of done like, with it. They, they don't want to. They don't. They probably just don't have any. Yeah, Joss Whedon and Drew Goddard. Oh, I don't know. Are the team that did Cabin in the Woods. Mm-hmm. Because Cabin in the Woods was that screenplay that they did. They wrote together for the first time or something. And it sat on the shelf for like four years. Oh, yeah. That was, I like that movie a lot. It's I, a great movie, I think. Well, the story behind it's really interesting, too. Like how they mm-hmm. wrote it. They like got a place and all this other stuff. So, I right. mean, it'd be interesting to see what Drew does. Yeah, but uh, why can't they just do Dude, something Dude, after the new? last one, the more and more I think about it, like, I liked the movie in the very beginning, but then it just fell apart as the movie progressed. Mm-hmm. Like, I loved the whole idea that they built a game inside the game. Oh, yeah. I Yeah. I like I liked that last one. Yeah. I thought it was fine. It's okay. But I don't know when why you people are pitching it, about no, but it. But when you but... compare it to the other ones, which everybody didn't like either. Yeah. Oh, the sequels. Yeah. yeah. It was seemed like it was a conscious effort to do something a little bit more theological. Right. And it failed. Right. It like It's like, oh, you get it now. Right. Because like where the second movie, in my opinion, should have been is that there was another layer. Mm-hmm. And they never did it. 
they did this weird like underground, you know, this is the real world mm -hmm. dystopian thing. I think they should have done that for the third one. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that, you know, but it's it's still those are still interesting movies to watch. They're eye candy, you know. Right. But the first one's always going to be the one oh, yeah. that like changed Christians lives forever. <laughs> <laughs> It, it was pretty good. The first yeah. one's great. Great movie. <laughs> so anyway. what are we going to do for my birthday, Christina? What, what, what are the plans? I told you. I what told do we you, design? Well, it depends on I don't, what I don't, you want to do. I'm not going to work on Sunday. Well, I may. I may put something up, but you know, I've worked on it on Friday and Saturday. Because we're recording today on Friday. And then the episode comes out on Monday. So I'm right. going to be a busy boy for the next two days. So, you, so Alex's birthday is on Sunday. Yeah. So... Yeah, we'll probably just go out to eat and then, you know. Okay. Maybe we'll go to a movie or something. Yeah, we'll see. We'll if see. I can stay awake. We'll see. And then there, then there'll be an eclipse and then the whole world's going to Yeah, end. and that's when I will because usher there's, in. there's earthquakes in New York and, you know, the Coincidence? Eclipse. My yeah, birthday's. Coincidence and your birthday? What the fuck? Yeah. Birthday's at midnight and it kind of, you know. Maybe you'll gain magical powers because your moon sign aligns with yeah. the sun's orbit of the thing. Lady Terminator. That's what and I'm yeah, going to. Yeah, you're going to turn into the Lady Terminator. I'm going to get possessed by the spirit of, of and then eels Robin are gonna Williams. And eels I will are going to come out of your taint and like take <laughs> over the world. You want to let me speak? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think I'll be possessed by the spirit of Robin Williams and will exact revenge on everybody for um, not loving all of his movies or something. <laughs> <laughs> and will be called... Uh, Mr. Doubtfire. <laughs> uh, anyway, <laughs> so uh, we do have a giveaway that we're still going to do. It ends this 12th of April. So if you haven't signed up, I've been trying to promote it online. Uh, all you have to do is watch our episodes of the podcast, which if you're listening now and you have not signed up, we've had a lot of signups the past couple of days or so uh, for this. But we're giving away four movies, The Abandoned from Unearth Films, MVD and Unearth Films are teaming up for this one, um, by the way. But this is the abandoned from Eight Films to Die For that is coming out April 9th. You can pre-order it now. You can pick up a copy for yourself, and it'll be out the tomorrow for you guys. Uh, we also have Beetlejuice on 4K that we're giving out. The Quiet Earth, about uh, it's a thriller, sci-fi thriller that is amazing that if you've never seen, you must watch before you die. And a fleshy body horror movie from Japan called The Sound of Summer, which is really wild. Um, we're including all of that for a free giveaway. All you have to do is follow Unearth Films and MVD Entertainment on both Instagram and Twitter. Retweet this episode or, you know, reshare it some way because that's how we get our support, guys. <laughs> and then uh, fill out the VIP club section in our website you can go to the front page it's on there or you can go to the vip club tab and click and fill out your information there it's an emailer that i send out once a, once a week and sometimes i forget <laughs> so once you sign up we'll pick a winner we'll announce it on the next episode it'll be the 14th i think the next episode yeah, the next episode from this yeah 368 but yeah good I, luck yes good luck to every one of you happy birthday thank you christina you're welcome and i think it might be that time time is it horse, horse shots all right so we're not really doing anything for horse <laughs> i just realized what i'm doing i am actually horse shot free because i'm on antibiotics so i can't drink so yeah, so today i'm drinking by myself and uh yeah i'm drinking my ice cream cone when you get older a lot of things happen by yourself like friends <laughs> i'm just teasing anyway we got I, I just wanted to do something different so i didn't want to do like shots the whole fucking move you know episode so i thought you know one of my favorite things to do out here in arizona is drink uh micheladas they're basically beer and tomato like v8 or spicy v8 and you put tahine sauce or what is it called spice tahine it's not tahine oh it's something else but that seasoning. spicy seasoning that you put on stuff it's a, it's like a mexican seasoning and everything like that but i got this one and we got a modelo chalada 
with mango and chili, which I, I should have drank that one first, but maybe it's good Pretty. that I'm drinking this one. So it's we're good. just going to cheers to that. Cheers. If you've never had cheers. one and you ever want to sit by a pool, these are the best drinks. Seriously. Do you sit by pools? I've never seen you sit by a pool. <laughs> I've sat by a pool, but I'm saying like if you want to sit outside for the summer... <laughs> Happy birthday. Oh, hey, thanks. thanks. You're welcome. Whatever. Let me go grab a shotgun. All right. <laughs> so, oh. so if you want to see the live video of that, go to Long Live the Void. Oh, shit. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Anyway, guys, thank you uh, for this wonderful new year of being alive. I'm thankful for you guys, Christina, my dog, who is carefully searching the room for any scrap of food that there might be on the ground that we might have missed. <laughs> He's diligently working down there. And uh, cheers. Happy birthday. All right, guys. So now it's time for us to jump into our flesh and potatoes of Lady Terminator. Right. Right. All right, Christina. Lady Terminator released June 10th, 1989 in the United States. But it came out in 88 in Indonesia. Yeah, but I just... United States because that's where we live. Sure you did. The <laughs> the spirit of an ancient evil queen possesses the body of a young anthropologist student who then goes on a murderous rampage. Hmm. Interesting. We have other movie titles besides Lady Terminator. In Germany, this is called Nasty Hunter. <laughs> In nasty hunter. You are a nasty hunter. Mm. In Italy, <laughs> this movie is called The Revenge of the South Sea Queen. Hey! <laughs> in, <laughs> in Japan... I'm not going to do none of that. In Japan, this is called Snake Terminator. <laughs> the snake wench dies twice. Wow. Even though there's like no snakes in this movie. The but snake wench dies the twice. The snake wench dies twice. Twice. It sounds like a like a, a giallo. <laughs> <laughs> we got some taglines. Do you want to help me with them? Yeah, sure. She had one purpose in life. Get even. She had all the equipment necessary. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> That's all? That's That was one? That was one. Okay. Uh, and then first she mates, then she terminates. <laughs> <laughs> she kind of mates and terminates at the same time, technically. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's probably the best one. <laughs> That's pretty good. An outrageous tale of blood, babes, and black magic. She is nasty and imperishable. No one could stop her. What? What is the nasty thing? Is that like a mistranslation or something? Because nasty has a different meaning to it now, you know? Yeah. Nasty back then would have been, you have a nasty attitude. You know what I mean? Right. I don't know. <laughs> She's nasty. She's a nasty, dirty tripe. Tripe? <laughs> Isn't that a fish? Yeah, well, I don't know. Actually, I think it's like it's like meat, like the tripe. Oh, yeah. okay. Anyway. She slays anyone in her way. She mates and then she terminates. That's the best one. Yeah. All right, this is by director. Hold on. Where's my phone? <laughs> I pr I practiced this, guys. You don't I was understand. The name. Yeah, yeah, I had a little song and stuff. You had a song. You remember I was singing it out in the living room. Oh, and you were like to try to memorize it. Yeah, and I totally forgot. Now, <laughs> uh, so this is by director Shoot Jalil. The J Jalil, yeah, I think that's how you say it. And uh, he was known for doing. Juanita Dalam Gara, Dangerous Seductress, The White Alligator, and many, many more. Uh, actually, he did The Mystics of Bali, which was one of the ones about the girl's head that comes off. 
She's like Pagmalian or something. I think that's what they call him. Uh-huh. And they, uh, it's like a head that comes off and like hunts women down and sucks your baby out of your, your uh. Oh. <laughs> I think I've had that happen to me. <laughs> I think a lot of us have. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> Uh, anyway, that's a crazy movie. We did an episode of it on the podcast, just not video. Um, this is by Rainer Carr Krunos, who was an assistant cameraman on the film. We got uh, a couple of actors and actresses. Barbara Ann Constable, who was Tanya. She was a professional dancer in Australia that studied in Queensland. And uh, she is one hell of a Terminator in this movie, man. She she's is, a lady. She, she's she's a, a lady. She's a lot of nude, too, in this movie, too. So, <laughs> like, plenty nude. Mm -hmm. uh, we got... I'm sorry. She did her own stunts in this movie, and she went on to become a fashion beauty editor as well and an in-house writer for Eve magazine. And she lives in Australia. We got I. Kang Fwazi, who plays Tom. And uh, he was a famous Indonesian rock star in the 1980s and uh, sires in various Indonesian TV shows. Sires? Stars. Oh. Missed Stars that. Stars in very... In missed that autocorrect. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we also have Christopher J. Hart, who plays Max, the detective. He is, the, he is in this, and this is it. This is all he did. Yeah, that's all he did. And... Surprisingly, he wasn't the worst actor in this yeah, movie exactly. either. Yeah, exactly. You thought he, would, he came from TV or something, right. you know? Right. We got Claudia Angelique Rademacher, who plays Erica, This and this is all she's ever done, too. Christina, what did you think of this film? This is your first time. It's my first time, too, first, by the way. Right. Okay. <laughs> she was not in the mood for this at first. She's not in the mood. But at the end of it, I never understood the term trash cinema until I watched this movie. Okay? It's great. It's great. This is a goddamn masterpiece. <laughs> A trashter piece. A trashter piece. <laughs> That's great. We should coin that no, term. No, somebody already did. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, God damn it. I was getting all excited. It is action fucking packed from beginning to end. Okay? Action packed. You it would is. think movies like this, these so, these so bad it's good movies, you always think, it, you know, it's action. It's either like in the beginning or right at the end. That's true. But, but no, the whole fucking thing. Absolute garbage story. <laughs> It a lot of garbage sex scenes, too. <laughs> <laughs> She's pissing blood all over everybody. They took this old tale, like this myth or legend from the old times, okay? And they updated it to modern terms, like 1988 terms, where they just made their myth, their mythical thing, into yeah, a modern day a thing. Terminator. Yeah. <laughs> That's all. Which yeah, is the hilarious. South, the South. Wait, was it the South Queen Sea? I can't even say it now. South Sea Queen. Oh, yeah, it's because it's based off the legend of the South Sea Queen. Yeah, that's right. It was that's on a, right. in a book, technically. Now, but people believe these really, this is like a real thing where people actually believe yeah, this. Yeah, so they just twisted it to make it more appealing. And fit the Terminator. And, it, and fit the Terminator in that legend. Right. And it's great. Dun, 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 now. Dun. The actual plot in the movie has so many fucking holes. I didn't understand the characters and the relevance for some of the characters. But you know what? It doesn't really matter. You know? No, you don't watch this movie for that. No, no. And I mean, they, they had they had little tidbits of things. And like, you, you find yourself like trying to connect the dots. But, but then... You're in the middle of the movie, and then you're like, fuck it. You don't really need to connect the dots. There's no reason to. Dude, it's some trash. of the dialogue is fucking... Oh, yeah. Bananas. <laughs> but in a good way. Yeah. Yeah. It's a so bad, it's good film. Right. So many people in this movie get shot. Like, there's so much shooting in this movie. Violently, too. Like <laughs> They must have been like, we're making an American movie... We need to put some guns in this bitch. I mean, Terminator had a lot of fucking guns and people getting shot up and stuff. So, Do you yeah. think this movie had more people getting shot up Fuck yeah, than the dude. Terminator? There's a part where she stands over somebody and just continues to shoot him for like a minute. Yeah, it was <laughs> crazy. It was pretty wild. The only thing that would have made that better is watching his head explode like a fucking watermelon. That would have been I mean? great. 
Like if they would have had the money to put into that, yeah. You know, but it, they did a good job. I'm they just really saying. did. And what's funny too, you, I mean, it's obviously dubbed. Like mm-hmm. the movie's obviously dubbed. It was better that way. But yeah, it was great that way. The yeah. dubbing was perfection. It it matched the acting, you know, because it you know it was all kind of crappy. But and it's an hour and twenty two minutes, which is perfect. Yeah, it's perfect for. A cinema trash movie, or what I say, what I say, so oh, trash is- cinema. A so bad is a good, good movie. I like trash cinema better, though. I like that. But you, this score is going to be based on a so bad it's good. Ten. A ten. A ten. This is your favorite so bad it's good film you've I seen. I think so. Yeah. It's really. Pretty damn good. Why? What do you think? Because- I, I've seen, I've seen a couple more better than this, but I yeah, mean, this is what? a good one. What? Um, I don't. I don't know. Like, uh, I, I'm a big Boxer's Omen fan, and I love that movie in particular. Mm-hmm. Um, I like uh, Creatures from the Abyss. I like uh, the inv- Uninvited, the cat one on the boat. That was uh, kind of boring. Yeah, no, no, yeah, no, yeah. no. Yeah. <laughs> I like Night Killer. That's another one, the one where the guy comes running out of the bathroom. I got molested. <laughs> oh, yeah. But again, <laughs> that was kind of slow. Uh, yeah, I guess you're See? right. This one has a better pacing, but I don't think I laughed as hard at this as I have with those ones, though. Oh, okay. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Like, I laughed, but, you know. Right. It's still a good one. I'm not trying to put it down, but... <laughs> Anyway, yeah, she's right about everything that she said, pretty much. I mean, this is a movie where they basically said, because this is what I thought it was. It was going to be some lady who turns out to be a robot or something. Yeah. And it, it's really just the South Sea Queen who, like, Mississippi Queen. <laughs> she, don't you know what I mean? <laughs> no. What she's, does that have to do with anything? <laughs> it just makes me think of it when I think South Sea Queen. The South Sea Queen. Queen. <laughs> anyway, she possesses this girl who is like basically the anthropologist. Just un- yeah, she's an anthropologist. I'm an the- anthropologist. She's the dumbest anthropologist that I think anybody has ever seen. <laughs> I'm not a lady. Yeah, I'm she- an anthropologist. Essentially, uh, what happens is is that this this South Sea Queen has a castle that comes up out of the sea every hundred years or something like that, and she like somehow like snake charms people to come like men to fuck her and if they don't please her well enough she kills them while she's on top of them Mm -hmm. and then uh some guy tricks her and steals her power and then says you're mine now you're i'm gonna marry you you're gonna you you have to stop all these killings and she said you tricked me in a hundred years i (laughs) i will curse your Your great great granddaughter granddaughter. yeah and so the you're like what (laughs) the great great granddaughter is some sort of anthropologist woman who walks in and just desperately wants to find this random book that she's never heard of. I guess she heard from somebody else. Right. And she and he and the and she's warned not to look at it and somehow gets possessed by it. Right. But see that's a plot hole because she wasn't the great great granddaughter. It was the other girl who was the granddaughter. So she she's not really because good. they had the she had the dagger from Oh yeah, that that's guy. right. That's so. right. Yeah. Well maybe she she brought that girl back to life to get the girl with the pendant. Exactly. Yeah. So because that was the great great granddaughter was the one with the pendant. Yeah. But it, it it's, it's crazy. It's, it's wild, like there is some of the worst dialogue in this. Like when people die, they're like, Oh no, Tom. The best no 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 the best Don't one. don't spoil it. Just wait. Let me finish my thing. Uh there's just a lot of really funny dialogue in there. That uh, just was cracking me up because, like, the acting is just so terrible. And there's, like, people from all over the world in this, too. Like, there's, like, you know, Australia. They For some reason, they, they do a lot of Australian actors, I guess, because it's close in proximity. Um, and they speak, cl- you know, English or whatever. So it makes sense, I guess. Um, but, yeah, there's just a lot of people from all over the world. And it's totally, like, this is a totally 80s movie. Like, the music, the fucking action, the... The people getting shot up left and right. I mean, there's a lot of people that die in this movie. Mm -hmm. There's a lot. And uh, it's glorious. I actually kind of liked it. Um, I would say that if you know how to take, you know, a movie like this and watch it and and get a good laugh out of it or get a good, you know, enjoyment out of watching it, then you've probably succeeded to the next layer of horror fandom where you're actively seeking, like, 
terrible films because there's that sweet spot that you just can't get anywhere else and this is one of those movies that's so bad it's good and I, yeah I, it's it's like an eight out of ten for me right it's pretty good yeah it, it's definitely uh, up there mm -hmm. so wow <laughs> this movie is something else man so you gave it an eight so it's a nine out of ten between the two of us mm -hmm. that's and, and christine has never given a 10 away i don't i don't just give those out yeah and i'm like really interested in like so bad it's good and she's like kind of coming around to it now no nah, no usually i don't like them because they're boring right they only have good parts this one it you, was the whole thing th through you did a good job of not getting too excited because like i didn't think you were gonna like this one that much to be well, honest i was with tired you. yeah I watched it yeah because you wait well, till the last damn second well to plus watch i have to take movies. notes and i have to write everything oh, down and then he has to pause the movie while we're watching it like 50 times well because yeah because i want to write down stuff about it so <laughs> Anyway, uh, we do have some trivia a little bit on this anyway that uh, we're going to talk about. And, uh, of course, if you want to watch this movie, it's actually very difficult to watch. You literally have to go find a copy of it <laughs> online. Mondo Macabra sells it, but I think you can only get it on eBay oh. or Amazon. You might be able to get a copy there, too. But highly recommend watching this. I think I looked for a copy on YouTube and I really couldn't find a copy. There's a really shitty quality one on there, I think, mm -hmm. that I was like looking for footage for. So you might be able to uh, sequester that, but it's difficult to find. Um, my Unfortunately, we're just going to have to tell you about it and show you clips of it. So mm -hmm. buckle up and get ready for the ride, okay? So if you don't want anything spoiled, here is your warning. So, we do have some trivia on this one. Uh, Barbara Ann Constable, who played the Terminator lady, she said that in an interview that she was only took the role because she was told the film was a local Indonesian market only. And the whole script was <laughs> very weird when I read it. And to boot, it was a ripoff of The Terminator from 84, which was a massive American film that had great acclaim. I felt like there was no harm in doing such a film for the local Indonesian market if it gave the people all there some thrills. But come on, it's not like it exposes me in the best light. <laughs> in, so many, in so many different ways, I'm so sorry. But that's what you can't you can't put yourself out there. You know what I mean? Like people are going to find a way to save this kind of stuff. Right. It's not like she's like ugly or something. You know what I mean? So, of course, it's going to get popular one way or another, good or bad. <clears throat> um, if I was going to do a film for the international market, I would have only done it willingly if it was a credible script and had some decent actors and actresses in it. I understand Lady T has become a cult film in the U.S. and U.K. and European countries, but I think this has happened due to the sheer insanity of the film and therefore its comedic entertainment value. I mean, she's not wrong. Right. But she'll always be immortalized because of that movie, too. Mm -hmm. The magic of film. Barbara Ann Constable also performed her own stunts, which we mentioned earlier. She was... Uh, she actually had the production shut down for a month after her ankle was skewered by a large shard of glass. Oh, no. She uh, actually remained on full salary during this time, and she was stitched up at a military hospital and eventually regained her ability to walk. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. crazy. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine? No. You do a job and you can't walk anymore because of it? <laughs> like, right. fuck. I would, that would be like... And they, you know this, they didn't have that much money to pay her mm -hmm. to because these weren't big budget movies. You know, They were like, mm -hmm. hey, we're going to give you tax credits for distributing other films, which, you know, wasn't a lot of money anyway. Like, it's, right. it's a lot, but it's not that much. Mm -hmm. It's not, I just took a woman's leg off <laughs> <laughs> cost. You know what I mean? Right. This is the funny part. I read this in IMDb and it said... Not in any way related to James Cameron films, by the way. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh my God! How? Who would have thunk? <laughs> hmm. I'm like, really? <laughs> oh my God! 
obviously people used it to boost their sales because there's different laws in different countries, just like the Italians did. Okay. That's just the way it is. Some things will never change, but Barbara Ann Constable, this was her only film role. So maybe she was a little sore about it because she actually wanted to be an actress. There was another uh, interview with her and they had asked her if she had any problems doing the nude scenes. And she said, the nudity didn't phase me at all. Being a professional dancer at the time, I was very comfortable with my body in general. And I was a woman. I have always been very comfortable with my sexuality. I appeared in Australian penthouse as November pet of the month. I was 19, four years before I made Lady Terminator. I was in great shape physically at the time, so nudity wasn't a problem at all. So, I mean, I don't think you would do a role like that necessarily. Right. She's, like, really nude in it, like, a lot. Yeah, like, like literally nude. Yeah, like, 80% of the fucking movie with her in it is nude. Mm-hmm. Maybe not. I don't know. No, it's not that half, much. Half of the movie. Mm-hmm. Because she does r- r- run around in clothes and stuff like that and gets shot up a bunch of times and doesn't bleed for some reason, which is weird. Mm-hmm. But maybe they wanted to well, kind of give it sh- that robot thing. Well, there was a, sh- a scene where it looked like she had bullet holes in her and she like pushed him out. Like her body pushed him out. Right. That's true. So. She did heal. She did this thing in the movie where she like did like uh, meditation <laughs> so that she could push all the bullets out of her mm-hmm. uh, which is a little weird you know mm-hmm. and then they even had the eye scene that was one of my favorite scenes which is from Terminator yeah when her... he removes his eye yeah but she cut her eyeball out of her her skull <laughs> And, and then rinsed it, it off. Yeah, dropped it in the water to rinse it off and then put the eyeball back, which is like, <laughs> what the fuck was just the whole point of that? Was I, there something in their eyes? She's like, that's a little shot? dirty. Like, what, what's the point of this? One of my eyelashes came off. I had to remove <laughs> it and get that off of there. <laughs> <laughs> my eyelash was in my eye, so I had to remove my eye. <laughs> Uh, around the 40 minute mark, this is where they have the one line in it that's like a uh, total stole. Uh, but it's it, the blonde cop says to the singer, come with me if you want to live, <laughs> which is Reese's character in the Terminator right. who says that. Yeah, that was silly. <laughs> but, that's, but that's great. I didn't think about it until I heard it. And then I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. We're watching a ripoff. Let's say. Right. Can I tell you my favorite line in the movie? What? We've seen we've seen more dead bodies than you've eaten hot dogs to shut up and eat. So shut up and eat. Yeah, they had this, which was so weird. <laughs> well, there was this moment in the film that they were trying to make one of those kind of like camaraderie moments, you know, mm-hmm. where the the police are like at the at the station and they're like joking about what they had to eat there, and he's like, "All we have is hot dogs." He's like. Ah oh, man, I'm sick of hot dogs. And they're like, well, you better get used to it because that's all we got. <laughs> so weird. It was really. <laughs> it was so weird. I thought a lot of the sex scenes were really funny because she would just like ride somebody and she would grind them without her top on. And the pants would be on, by the way. And the guys would always like either like get ready to fuck immediately and then all of a sudden they'd be moaning and then it was like they were coming before this is my theory anyway if they came before she did she killed them it the wording because it's a movie you can't outright say it just like how they have to to have sex with their clothes on uh, okay i'm just making but sure but yes that's what it meant <laughs> i don't know i was just saying she did they didn't outright say it that's all i'm saying so my theory was is that was what it was and that's what it was and the first man that that, that that beds her and gives her an orgasm he pulls this weird slug or fucking it was an eel an eel out of her vagina and then goes like this which like like you're opening it taking a sword out of a sheath it turns into it a turns dagger into a, like a swirly dagger like one of those like swirly lines and then he he's like, "You are go- now mine." Yeah, and if I think he went to go stab her, but he, she like, like lasered him off of her. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And then cursed him, and said that she was going to come back and, you know. And then she went back into the sea and then, whatever. You know. Yeah. Tur- yeah, and then she came back as Terminator. There was also a, a lead singer in this movie who was the one that was the daughter of the guy. He was, she's the great, great, great granddaughter of that guy that tried to kill her. Mm-hmm. That's the South Sea Queen. 
and uh, that she has this pendant around her neck. And then her, there was a funny part in the movie where they everybody's in the mall. By the way, this is like all you did in the movie is like whenever you hung out, you went to the mall, mm-hmm. and it's a like totally eighties in that way. But I think that's the them mirroring the you know like the culture of like America. Exactly. You know, because they saw it on the on the thing. They they said it in the documentary that they were trying to mirror stuff. Yeah, guns. Yeah. America, <laughs> guns. I don't think guns are synonymous. Fuck the mall. Yeah. Everybody had a mall. <laughs> America, guns. I don't know if Indonesia had a lot of malls, though. You know what I mean? Not like us. Well, they might have because, I mean, they filmed it in a mall in Indonesia. Maybe. But they go to the mall and they go to this, like, jewelry shop. And she's like, oh, look, it's just like yours. This is the place. It looks just like your necklace. And she's like, yeah, it's but it's not a real one. <laughs> <laughs> and so then she dies because of it. Because they go, the, the Lady Terminator kills her thinking it's the, the pendant. Mm-hmm. And then she just crushes it. And she's like, you dumb bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Which that whole scene was funny. There was a a bar scene where two uh, biker ruffians come in. And they're mm-hmm. like really poorly dubbed, by the way. Like he sounds like they're they're trying to do like a uh, American accent. It's almost like maybe like it was, a southern accent. Yeah, they were trying to do a southern accent, but it sounds like Dale from the fucking, you know, like, hey, Dyer, what you doing, buddy? Hey, hey, hey. Well, that's an American accent. <laughs> yeah, but right? it's a lot worse than that. It was like it sounded like it Hillbilly. didn't. Sound, it didn't sound like a guy that was tough. It sounded like a guy who works as a janitor. You know what I mean? Or like, uh, like you know, you just wouldn't think like a biker, like they were trying right. to portray in this movie is all I'm saying. Which is funny. He's like, hey, lady. But but they come in with bad American accents trying to hit on women and get into a bar fight with Max, who's the detective in this movie, the blonde haired guy. And he's off duty. And uh, as soon as he beats the shit out of the guy and throws the other guys around... He like hits on the fucking girl, of course, and then goes and beds her for the <laughs> for the night, you know, mm-hmm. because that's how easy it is. That's, that's how it's America. God damn it. <laughs> this is American ladies. But he wakes up and you realize that it's all a memory and it was his ex-wife. Now, why that was in the movie? Yeah, I didn't understand that. Like, why even bring up his ex-wife like or his dead wife or yeah what yeah it was his dead wife she died it was true love and first fight you know it was so weird (laughs) and then there was this really cool scene with the anthropologist before she got possessed where they go out on this boat right and there's like a captain of the boat and his name's popeye oh yes right no 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 the captain isn't Popeye. Oh, oh he's pirate joe he's pirate joe she called him pirate joe and then she called him Captain. Yeah, because she wanted to go find the South Sea Castle. Right, where, where the and queen he was, was like, at "You don't want to go out there. This is dangerous." And she's like, "Yeah, but I'm a hot chick." And he's like, "Okay." No, she said, "I'm an anthropologist." Yeah, well, but you know I'm what I mean. an anthropologist in a bikini. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, he takes her out there. He's like, "All right, Popeye, let's go out there." We both laughed at that. Yeah, we were like, that was cute. His name's Popeye. Yeah. But do you want me to tell what happens? Yeah, go ahead. So <laughs> she goes scuba. There, there's things that happen in this movie that I just don't really make sense or why they were added in there. Like you, you see these things in movies usually when they do these obligatory things that usually come back. Right. As like, you know, like they put the things. Yeah. There like they for trip reason. over something early on because later they're on, gonna bring it back. they're going to bring it back when the killer's chasing him through the kitchen. Oh mm-hmm. my God. He tripped over the same spot and now she can get away. You know, it's mm-hmm. like that, that moment. Well, she goes into some scuba gear <laughs> and he's like, okay, be safe down there. You know, be, you know, make sure you're down, not down there too long or whatever. And she, something happens with her, like I don't know scuba gear respirator her, her aqua lung that's what it was oh okay and she comes back up and we're like okay and then it's like they never cared to bring it up again no and then she no then she went back down and then a tidal wave came right well that's what I'm saying but I'm talking about the aqua lung oh when did they bring that back they didn't they right. didn't have to they didn't I have wasn't to. trying to skip over the tidal oh. wave I was just saying like well that's why they didn't have to because the tidal wave came and washed them all away they just disappeared and then later on they say on the news that uh, uh, y- there's this missing boat crew that just vanished 
Right. How would they know? Yeah. Well, they 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 found her picture and and they said her boat crew is missing or something. But yeah. But they didn't like realize that she was missing. Which so so I'm like, what the fuck is Dude, that? You forgot the most funny part in that whole fucking thing that you just skipped over. Uh, it, this is what I was leading up to, but you oh, just sorry. can't wait because I'm so long winded. Well, no, yeah, you are long winded, and you told me I'm you trying to, to build forget. it up for the fucking tension. God damn it! <laughs> Fuck your tension. <laughs> uh, so uh, there's a part in the movie. Where, where the captain and the Popeye are on the boat while she's underneath the water and she never she's down there swimming around looking for the place. And you hear the wave come and then he's like, <laughs> this is what he says. He's like, wait, what's this? Oh my God, what have I done? And then <laughs> it looks like someone threw like three buckets of water on him. Meanwhile, you see this huge wave. The stock footage way. Yeah, it crashes on top of like a, a, a model boat, like a little one. Mm -hmm. Like they, they had some waves somehow. I don't know what they did. And it just blows <laughs> it blows up. Oh, yeah. The, the ship just blows up. That's right. Right. And I was like, what the fuck? But, you know, no one must have saw the the fire because they were missing. So. Right. And when she's down there, the snake, the, the eel. eel, Climbs into her hoo-ha, mm -hmm. and then she appears later that night on a beach where two guys, and I kid you not, are sitting oh there God. having so the dumb. dumbest dialogue. It was so dumb. <laughs> they were told to, like, probably look like they're just having a good time or something and mm -hmm. laughing about something, and they didn't have any dialogue for it. Mm -hmm. So they were just kind of winging it. If you can tell, <laughs> it's so obvious. But she appears on the beach naked in a trance, and the two dudes are laughing as one of them is, like, peeing. Literally peeing up, kind of close to his face, which like is like he was holding a squirt bottle on yeah. his. And then he freehands it at one point in time. <laughs> he's like, "Woo!" And he's like peeing straight up. And I was like, "Ew, what the That's fuck?" Gross. Anyway, they don't see her coming up yet, and and no joke, he says. Wouldn't it be cool if like the South Sea Queen came back and like killed us right now? I guess what happens? He, she fucks him to death mm -hmm. in the back seat and then in the front. On the beach. I kept saying something. Christina was getting mad at me when I said that. I was like, oh, look, she's peeing blood on him again. Because all that would happen was is that her vagina would eat their penises. Which they didn't show anything, but they just showed blood squirting like it was squirting. So yeah. it did. It looked like pee, but it's like, that's not possible. It just sprays from their stomach. So then I had to explain to Alex that <laughs> you did not the, eel, the eel crushed the man's pee pee the in eel bit the their penis yeah. off yes thank While you in the vagina you know how i know that christina vagina not because you dentata. told me dentante vagina dentata yeah dentata vagina dentata anyway do you want to know how i know that how do you know that because the goddamn police officers say it in the fucking <laughs> yeah morgue. exactly he's like hey I'm all of them three three bodies just showed up and we don't know why but they're all missing the tips of their penises <laughs> The tips of their cocks. That's looks, what he says. It looks like an eel. Could have been an some eel. sort of animal or an eel of some sort. Ate it off. And the guy goes, oh, yeah, they say that eels are like, you know, it's the best feeling you've ever had, you know. But uh, I don't think it's worth it. It's like, oh, my God. <laughs> what the fuck? I don't know. Like, they took that picture of the fish sucking the dude's dick in, yeah. the, in the old times, you know, where mm -hmm. he's, like, fishing on top of the water. Right. And then the fish is sucking his yeah, dick. Yeah, I know. We know. <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. There's another part, one of my favorite parts. There's a lot of chases in this. and like Lots of chasing, lots of shooting. They shoot her down, like, a million times. There was a cool scene where, like, one of the... Um, she busts into some place and kills all these military guys who were talking about her, obviously, like, you know, because that's what happens. And uh, she stands over the dude and just, like, unleashes every single bullet into his chest. Mm -hmm. The entire fucking clip. Just over and over and over and over again. And I'm like, damn, dude. Like, Jesus, that was cool. But then they, like, they, they meet up with the cops. She keeps, they keep finding her because she's wearing the pendant. Mm -hmm. And it's like a homing... Thing. You get reintroduced to her uncle, who was her great, you know, right? The one that's like knows about the whole story, I guess, because it was passed down from generation. Mm -hmm. And he's like, "I have your necklace now." Doesn't he die at one point? I think so. Yeah, I forget how he dies, but it's really like simple. Yeah, 
And it's not like it's like kind of un I'm pretty sure it was her that killed him. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. The two guys were talking about the South Sea Queen. She slams into the building, crushes one guy up against the wall, and then the other guy she stands over and shoots to death. <laughs> And that's how the scene begins, which is kind of great. <laughs> we were like, holy shit, Jesus Christ. <laughs> and then uh, she never changes a clip in the movie, by the way, too. Right. There's a scene where she has like an Uzi, but she's firing single fire shots at people. I think it was in the mall scene when she goes in the bathroom to chase after the girl, her mm -hmm. friend, mm -hmm. and then pops her in the head with one bullet. <laughs> <laughs> and then the fucking the the fucking the bathroom attendant lady comes in to change the fucking toilet paper mm -hmm. and she's like wait no no and she gets shot <laughs> she just kills it. yeah that was great oh they do have like some sex scenes where they like i don't know it's the the whole love aspect of the like detective and the the singer is really terrible um yeah, like, she's like, I'm trying to get your attention, can't you see? It's like, oh, God. And then they start making out and fucking, of course. Snake is like a, is like a surfer bro in the movie. That He's like one of the cops' best friends. Mm -hmm. He's like one of their teammates that they've been with, like, when they go out on missions or whatever. And he's got, like, this, like, old, like, surfer do-rag, you know, kind of, not do-rag, but, I mean, do Right. And it looks like a like a mullet. Mm -hmm. And he's like, hey, bro. He's like, all right, dude. <laughs> and saying shit like that because, like, obviously we had stuff like that in the TV. Mm -hmm. and so they were mimicking that. And I kept laughing at his character the whole movie. And no matter how many bullets or, like, explosions or bombs, it, it, just, it just keeps working. Even Snake, like, he, like, tank slams her into the car and it turns on its side and they shoot missiles at it and it finally goes up in a fucking like blaze of a, glory a fire and she's like on fire for the first time mm -hmm. in the movie and you're just like holy shit she can be burned and she looks like Michael Jackson <laughs> from fucking yeah like thriller the thriller yeah the, yeah the zombie that's it's, what it was of course she comes busting out of the fire she's like yeah. And I remember I remember Snake was all like, "Yeah, you bitch." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, she was he said, "Yeah, eat it, you bitch." Yeah, eat eat it. it, you bitch. <laughs> That's funny. So funny. And then they notice like the body comes out and then like she starts shooting lasers out of her eyes. Yeah. And like a helicopter shows up out of nowhere, which by the way, this was like a not a not a fucking military helicopter of any sort. <laughs> it is a just a regular commercial fucking like helicopter. Puny little thing. And they had missiles on the side of it. And they also had a like a shotgun net or whatever that the, you know if you've ever seen the movie um what's the one where Arnold Schwarzenegger goes to Mars? The uh Total Recall? Total Recall mm -hmm. where they shoot the net over him when he goes to the airport. Mm -hmm. And it, they do that to him. They do that to her in the movie. The same fucking thing. It's the exact same thing. <laughs> and I swear to God, they stole that from there. So they, they shoot the net over her and yank her up. And mm -hmm. she lasers the fucking helicopter. Like, and it explodes. Oh, like, my gosh. And the funny thing is, is that one of the guys, like, as he sees it, everybody's like, oh, no. And they're all kind of looking sad, you know, like. And, and one of the guys on the ground is like. Tom, my bud. <laughs> <laughs> that is the fakest laugh I think I've <laughs> What, me? Yeah, it no, sounds wasn't. terrible. No, wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was funny anyway. they get, But they, of course, you know, they just keep shooting her because why, you know. What else are you going to do? Yeah, no bullets stop her, so what's the point? Yeah. Why waste your bullets? One of, the guys, one of the guys gets the bright idea to just beat her over the head with a fucking, with the end of his fucking gun. Right. Which actually does more to her mm -hmm. than, than the bullets. Than the bullets. Yeah. yeah which is hilarious. It, that, that was really funny. And she just tosses him aside like he's nothing. And then Erica, the singer girl, she climbs like a tower and they both try to hit her with like hit the fucking Lady Terminator with pipes. Mm-hmm. But they get thrown down and they finally take a dagger out. The dagger that they got from the uncle 
halfway through the fucking movie right. they decide oh maybe i should use this oh maybe this is the answer because maybe this is how she's gonna <laughs> I, die I, I, I want the knife i don't know what that means please <laughs> <laughs> you never seen the Golden Child? Remember with Eddie no. Murphy? Oh, you remember. haven't? No, I don't, I don't think so. I don't remember. It's amazing. That's an amazing movie. They have the Ajanti. Okay. They have the Ajanti dagger in that movie. Where it, okay. Yeah, it's very similar. All right. And they should have stabbed her with the Ajanti dagger. Mm -hmm. But they stab her, and she disappears into blue lightning, <laughs> and the end of the movie. <laughs> No more Lady Terminator. I don't know if she'll be back in a hundred years, like some sort of fucking like Jeepers Creepers, but <laughs> dude, there's so many more fucking scenes in that movie that we could have gone over. Oh though. yeah, because it was just like nonstop. It was back to back. It's true. I, I hope I, I do it justice when we do the the video. It's gonna be a lot of editing, uh, but I can show you just like pieces of that those moments. You know, like mm -hmm. oh no, Tom. Tom, my bud. It's uh. <laughs> funny. <laughs> Worst acting ever. Anyway, yeah, I, I think it's a great movie. I'm so glad that I picked this up. Like, this is a great watch. Yeah, me too. I'm glad you picked it up too because you can't watch it anywhere, so. Yeah, well, yeah, that's why I got it because yeah. some of these movies I thought for a while there we were never going to see again. Mm -hmm. But now a lot of these companies, these uh, boutique companies, like, are picking like up. Mondo Macabre are starting to bring out a lot of Indonesian, Hong Kong, Japanese, Chinese, like the whole works, like mm -hmm. of all these like catalogs of movies that have kind of been lost to time a little bit. Right. You know, Black, the, the Cauldron films does some and Mondo Macabre dumb, have done some that are not very big or popular ones. So like that you'll never see again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like they get a very limited license to put them out and that's it. Mm hmm. So, like, I got one, The Devil. Remember that one about the worms or whatever? Oh, yeah. We never watched. Right. Yet. So, Yet. We got whatever. a lot. We got a lot to do. Anyway, here. I never did eat my cake, but I have it here, and it's fine. I'm not going to eat on fucking the goddamn video, so we're supposed to blow it out or something. We got, like, little cupcakes here. Yeah, with, like, candles in them. Little hostess, so, hostess only, birthday cakes. I'm two years old, see? There Actually, I'm one. And uh, the the extra ones for good luck. Exactly. <laughs> hope you grow up one day. No, I, I hope kidding. so. I hope so too, Christina. <laughs> anyway, happy uh, birthday, Alex! Thanks. I hope it. I hope it's a good one. Yeah, I had a good time. Thanks, Christina. Appreciate it. She was very sweet. I tried. She's been very nice to me today. Just getting him all everything he needs, except for when we hit the pod. As soon as we got on here, it's all totally <sighs> off. <laughs> Anyway, but guys, next week we're. She says that we're going to be watching Lost Highway next week. I'm not sure if I'm in the mood for that. Oh, okay. That's a little heavy. Okay. I don't know. That's what we have. I don't know. After scheduled. watching this, we'll see. We'll see because that's a little. That's that's like a metaphorical movie, and it has like a lot of. Ooh, a I lot of. I literally haven't watched it since it like came out. Well, it's got like you know, it's about good and evil, you know. Okay. But it's um yeah, it was, it was one of those ones that had the like soundtrack kind of like The Crow. That was like right. really fucking good. Mm -hmm. Funny how secrets happen. Okay. Christina's doing a really good job of singing over there. Um, <laughs> anyway, we'll let you guys know on the socials what we're going to be doing for next week. Maybe it'll be Lost Highway if you guys really want us to. Um, I'll stick to that, but... Uh, maybe we'll watch something else. Depends. So uh, I've been wanting to do the Wishmaster series again. Oh, yeah. Because those are really cheesy, terrible. Okay. I think the first two are really good and the rest are really bad. Okay. So it's like two weeks of bad and two weeks of good. Mm -hmm. And then we're saving Final Destination for next year before the summer when the, the new one comes the out. The new one comes out, yeah. <sighs> it's gonna be a doozy. Yeah. That's a lot of movies. I know. But guys, thank you so much for coming by and supporting the channel. Please share this episode with someone that you love and uh, check out this film if you get a chance. If you can find a copy of it somewhere, whether you watch it or buy it or whatever, please check it out because I think you'll have a good time with it. Get some beer, some pizza, and have some fun. But thank you so much and as always, Long live the void.